that broadcast went completely tits up, didn't it? I've been getting chewed out by our asshole CIA liaison for the past two hours. What the fuck happened? We're looking into it, sir, but we experienced new issues with the broadcast in our end, so our engineers believe that the signal was hijacked before we were reaching the transmitter, but once we started receiving phone calls from viewers, we switched to a backup transmitter. But by then, the hijacker had already said everything they wanted to say, hadn't they? Mm, yes, sir. What a complete fuck up. They made us look like a fucking joke. And sure, our most popular show. Speaking of which, Don, where the fuck is he? I can't get hold of him, and he needs to get in here and read a statement to help clean up this fucking mess. Uh, well, we've been trying to reach him. We've called him multiple times. We've tried his pager. We've asked around to see if anyone's heard from him, but nothing. Right now we've got Gerald standing in for him tonight, if Don does not show. <sighs> You've been to his house? Uh, well, no. I just thought that maybe he'd be upset if I did that. So Get in your fucking car and go to his fucking house! I don't care if you kick down his front door and drag him here by his ear. You bring him into the studio. Do you understand? Yes, Mr. Rosenbaum. Of course, I'll do that right now. There's some real powerful people depending on us right now. They need us to manage the response to these events, to let the public know what's going on, and the last thing we need is it going wider than it already fucking has. So do what you need to do, or I'm going to replace you with some producers who actually know how to produce a fucking show! Sorry, the file you are trying to access has been destroyed and can no longer be executed or retrieved. Please choose another file. Sorry, sorry, I'm 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 are you sure you wish to proceed? Opening file. Arnold Rivers personal log. Final. My name is Arnold Eugene Rivers. The date is April 8th, 1987. About a quarter past nine at night. I was involved in the Morelli construction project at Mount Greylock. I was hired due to my background in anthropology and archaeology. I've worked to excavate a number of different historical sites. Paul Morelli took me on after securing a government contract for the Greylock project. I'm recording this because I believe my life is in danger, and I likely don't have a lot of time left, so I need to leave some kind of record of my findings. On March 24th, our crew came across tunnels in the mountain that held a multitude of ancient markings and artifacts. On March 25th, Paul cleared the interior of the mountain and asked me, accompanied by a small crew, to look through the tunnels and record notes on what I was able to recognize. I was then to report to one of the project directors, named Frank Porter, to offer my perspective on our findings. I kept this to myself at the time, but what we discovered in that mountain was not normal. Not only did I see the impact it was having on the crew, but certain aspects of my findings did not make any sense. Many of the artifacts were pre-colonial, some were from Native American tribes, but there were other artifacts, some Mesoamerican, and others were shockingly Clovis in nature. Finding Clovis artifacts here means that people have been coming to Mount Greylock since at least 11,000 BCE, but that's not all, no. There are artifacts I found that could potentially be from even earlier, Paleo-American cultures that we have yet to even begin studying. Then, there were artifacts and writings left by the cultures that were pre-Columbian in nature. Transoceanic contacts prior to Columbus reaching the Americas has always been largely a theory, but, but the artifacts in this mountain, they, they prove it. Ancient Chinese, Arabic, Indian, Roman, Spanish, Viking, even ancient Greek and Egyptian are findings that they alone would change world history as we know it today. I'll admit, the anthropologist in me was thrilled. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I figured it had to be a hoax, but I'm confident that it's all authentic. But my excitement was soon replaced with a looming fear and anxiety. How could such a place be so important to so many cultures for so long? 
There must be something immense here. Whatever it was, well, that's why I left the project. The tunnels all connected to a series of chambers deep into the interior of the mountain. That's where the majority of the relics were found. There were old baskets of herbs and spices, pottery, weapons and armor, talismans, and other religious items, countless other things. But all of it was there purposely as offerings. <laughs> Billions of years ago, when our planet was still mostly fire and rock, that a Mars-sized planet that had been drifting through our solar system collided directly with the Earth. The impact was so powerful and violent that the rogue planet was blown into countless pieces of debris. This debris collected to form our moon. Many of the pieces of the unknown planet remain inside the Earth to this day. Sedation recommended. 
Only communicate while patient is restrained or via intercom. Now loading. Profile for patient. B9231. Washington, Samuel. Al formations. Notes. Communicative. Patient suffers from constant state of severe paranoia and delusions, resulting in unpredictable violent outbursts. Standard treatment ineffective. High dose xylazine is recommended. Only communicate while patient is restrained or via intercom. Now loading. Profile for patient. B6670. Herrera, Ramon. Al formations. Notes. Uncommunicative. Patient appears to be in catatonic state. Warning, patient may sit up very suddenly, without provocation, to project a vomit at any staff in area. Patient's vomit is extremely corrosive and emits nerve gas. All treatments ineffective. Studies must be conducted with full anti-corrosive gear and air purifying respirator equipped on all staff involved. Now loading. Profile for patient. B8816. Fleming, Charles. Al formations. Notes. Uncommunicative. Warning. Patient will attack on site. Do not interact. Immunity to pain. Patient exhibits cannibalistic tendencies. All treatments ineffective. Immediate euthanasia recommended. Now loading. Profile for patient. B4041. Oathurst, Scott. Al formations. Notes. Communicative. Communicate with caution. Warning, patient actively pretends to be benevolent and friendly. Strong homicidal and cannibalistic tendencies. Killed and partially consumed six staff members on April 6, 87. Patient laughed hysterically during the attack. All treatments ineffective. Immediate euthanasia or permanent restraint for further study recommended. Now loading. Profile for patient. B7992. Kowalski, Edward. Al formations. Notes. Communicative. Hazardous. Warning, patient possesses inhuman power of suggestion and influence over others. Do not interact. All treatments ineffective. Immediate euthanasia recommended. Now loading. Profile for patient. B1584. Rafferty, John. Al formations. Notes. Uncommunicative. Hazardous. Patient appears to be deceased. No vital signs. Patient's body not decomposing. Warning, staff have become ill after even brief time spent in patient's room. Illness disregards protective suiting. Immediate quarantine required for all victims. Mortality rate post-exposure currently 92%. Survivors subject to rapid physical and mental malformations. All treatments ineffective. Immediate remote euthanasia recommended. I consider myself incredibly lucky to not be in that condition right now. Oddly, he quickly accepted my second refusal, wished me luck in my future endeavors, but before I could say anything else, he hung up. But it seemed I'd made the right choice. I heard something awful happened up at Mount Greylock, and then simultaneously, there were all of these things that have been happening around the mountain. The home invasions, the dead bodies that fell from the sky over Cheshire, the pregnancy phenomena, so many other unexplainable things. They all must be related. And I've been trying to figure out how. I've connected with a local investigator who's been trying to get to the bottom of this. I've shared with him everything I have, though I feel that I've been being watched. I feel a looming threat that I can't really explain. Would the government really send someone to kill me over this? I feel like I'm paranoid, like I've lost some of my mind. But I came home from the grocery store the other day, and my front door was unlocked. And I know I had locked it before I left. I scanned my entire house for traces of anything, but found nothing out of the ordinary. I even checked and replaced all of the light bulbs. <laughs> Saying it out loud like this, it makes me realize how crazy I sound. I've always been a rational man. There's a logical explanation behind everything. Well, I'm glad.
glad that I put all of this into a recording. Perhaps that was what I needed to snap me out of this. Honestly, I feel much better just talking about it. <gasps> this can't be. Oh my god, that's my basement door. No, 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 no. Camcoder. Oh, where's the damn camcoder? There it is. Thank god. I'm inside my bedroom closet. I'm going to keep the tape recorder running, and I'm hiding in here with my files. If something happens to me, and you find any tapes or files somehow, please bring it to the investigator, Jim Malcolm of North Adams. That goes for this video footage as well. Come on out, it's the police. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.